To get regular updates, subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon. Visit our channel and get more learning videos under playlist option. There you can find current affairs, daily vocabulary, banking awareness, aptitude and much more. Hello friends, I am Dipali from Example. Thank you for showing us the continuous support for our current affairs show. You can take the online mock test for IBPSPO exam at our application or our website from the given link below. We are changing our current affairs show from daily to weekly from this month. This show would go live by 8 pm every Friday night. In this season, we are going to see a compilation of the current affairs from the banking for the month of September 2017. The center is pushing for the Reserve Bank of India to enhance its dividend payout to the exchequer for the year 2016-17. The RBI has transferred just 30,659 crore as dividend for the year gone by to the exchequer, less than the half of 65,876 crore it had paid in the 2015-16. The government has budgeted for the 58,000 crore dividend from the RBI in the budget for the fiscal this year. Let's take a look at the question related to this topic. Which bank has the lowest dividend payout ratio in India? Your options are Option A, HDFC Bank Option B, ICICI Bank Option C, ING Vyasa Bank Option D, Karu Vyasa Bank Option E, Axis Bank You have 15 seconds to type in your answers in the comment section below. The correct answer is ING Vyasa Bank. Karur Vyasa Bank, a leading private sector bank, has opened its first rural digital center in an unbanked rural village in Erode district of Tamil Nadu. A cash recycler machine has been installed at the center, recently opened in Kattira Madhpatli, which locals could use to deposit and withdraw money in their preferred time. A passbook printer has also been installed. The center is powered with high-speed Wi-Fi connectivity and has a couple of tablets to ensure that the customer performs self-service banking and other transactions like train ticket booking, mobile top-ups and so on. Let's take a look at the question related to this topic. In which district Karur Vyasa Bank has launched its rural digital center in an unbanked rural village? Your options are Option A, Eurore, Option B, Tiruvanna, Malay, Option C, Velur, Option D, Kanchipuram, Option E, Dharmapuri. You have 15 seconds to type in your answers in the comment section below. The correct answer is Eurore. The center dashed off a letter to the public sector banks asking them to start the merger process immediately and their respective boards to take up the issue. The government said that the approval requirement of competition commission to expedite the merger among PSBs had been done away with. According to a senior bank official who received the communication, the government cited that the Nursiman Committee report and highlighted the need for the large size bank that could fund the huge infrastructure need of the country. Bankers said that this was the first time in the recent history that an official communication had come from the government to the banks asking them to start merger processes. Let's take a look at the question related to this topic. Which bank had made presentations to the finance ministry on their consolidation plans earlier in 2017? Your options are option A, Dana Bank, option B, Syndicate Bank, option C, Canara Bank, option D, Vijaya Bank, option E, all of the above. You have 15 seconds to type in your answers in the comment section below. The correct answer is all of the above. 
The target banks are known that their names survived the consolidation and they continue to have a strong role in the business operation, the official said. Earlier this year, four state-run banks, Syndicate Bank, Canara Bank, Vijaya Bank and Dena Bank made presentation to the Finance Ministry on the consolidation plans. Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi said to tax official that they should make every effort to bring all the traders, including the smaller businesses with turnover of less than 20 lakh, into the goods and services tax net. Currently, the traders with less than 20 lakhs annual turnover have to register under GST only if they are supplying goods into the other states. Let's take a look at the question related to this topic. What is true in terms of the GST? Traders with turnover with 20 lakh and below don't need to register GST. Traders with turnover 20 lakh and below don't need to file GST returns. All traders with turnover under 75 lakh can go for composition scheme. Your options are option A 1 only, option B 2 only, option C 3 only, option D 1 and 2 only, option E 2 and 3 only. You have 15 seconds to type in your answers in the comment section below. The correct answer is 2 and 3 only. Karnataka Bank has backed the best bank award among small banks for the use of technology for financial inclusion in the 13th IDRBT Banking Technology Excellence Awards 2016-17. A press release by the bank said that the Sri M.S. Mahableshwara, Managing Director and the CEO of Karnataka Bank, has received the award from the Sudarshan Sen, who is the Executive Director of RBI in Hyderabad recently. Mahableshwara said that this recognition will further motivate the bank in implementing its IT strategies more effectively in promoting the financial inclusion. Let's take a look at the question related to this topic. Which bank bags the 13th IDRBT Banking Technology Excellence Award 2016-17? Your options are Option A Canara Bank, Option B Indian Bank, Option C Karnataka Bank, Option D State Bank of Mysore, Option E Punjab National Bank. You have 15 seconds to type in your answers in the comment section below. The correct answer is Karnataka Bank. Reserve Bank of India has stated to a parliamentary panel that it had no information on the amount of black money removed because of demonetization. There was also no information about the unaccounted money that was legitimized by exchanging old currency notes. It has been said that Rs 15.28 lakh crore rupees in junked notes that came back would be subject to future corrections based on verification process. Here is the question related to this RBI's news item. In which section the legal basis for the order demonetizing currency can be found under Reserve Bank of India Act 1934? Option A, Section 26, Option B, Section 21A, Option C, Section 24, Option D, Section 27, Option E, Section 45U. You got 15 seconds to type in your answers. I know this is a tough one because uh, it is not easy to remember sections of your act. The right answer is section 26. India's largest public sector bank, State Bank of India, is gearing up to go high tech. Its new offering, SIA, is currently under beta testing. SIA, or the SBA Intelligent Assistant, is a chatbot that will guide you through products and services and answer your queries instantly. State Bank of India isn't new to use of bots and AA though. In fact, over 80% of its transactions are done through machines. Here is a question related to this news. Which of the following is correct regarding SBA's SIA? 1. It's a chatbot that will guide you through products and services and answer queries. Number 2. It has been developed by 
Alan Call, an IIT Bombay backed startup. 3. It can process your credit card related queries. Option A 1 only, option B 2 only, option C 3 only, option D 1 and 2 only, option E 1, 2 and 3. You got 15 seconds to type in your answers in the chat box next to the video. Right answer 1 and 2 only. SAA will answer queries in different types of loans and deposits. It has been developed by Alan Curl, an IIT Bombay back startup, but it will not process your credit card related queries. Reserve Bank of India has included HDFC Bank in the list of two big to fail lenders, referred to as DSIB, a domestic systemically important bank. With the inclusion of HDFC Bank in the list, there will now be three too big to fail financial entities in the country. SIBs are subjected to higher levels of supervision so as to prevent disruption in financial services in the event of any failure. Here is the question related to this news. Which of the other two banks were classified as DSIBs in 2015? Option A, SBA and ICICI. Option B, ICICI and Access Bank. Option C, SBA and Federal Bank. Option D, ICICI and Citibank. Option E, Citibank and Bank of Baroda. You got 15 seconds to pink. pick one answer from these things. The right answer is State Bank of India and ICICI Bank. India's largest lender SBA and private sector bank ICICI Bank were classified as DSIBs in 2015. The Finance Ministry has advised all the banks to take immediate steps to restrict transactions in bank accounts of more than 2.09 lakhs companies whose names have been struck off of the register of companies. Banks have also been advised to step up due to diligence while dealing with all the firms in general and have been alerted that even if the firm is active in the Corporate Affairs Ministry database, it should be seen with suspicion if it has failed to file return statements. Let's take a look at the question related to this topic. Who is the highest administrative authority for income tax in India? Your options are Option A, Finance Minister, Option B, Central Board of Direct Taxes, Option C, President of India, Option D, Direct of Income Tax, Option E, Prime Minister. You have 15 seconds to type in your answers in the comment section below. The correct answer is Central Board of Direct Taxes. Reserve Bank of India's Deputy Governor Viral Acharya said a feasible plan was quickly needed to address the massive recapitalization requirement of the public sector banks. The central bank has been pushing to restore the health of these banks in order to facilitate the loan offtake seen as an essential in reviving the economic growth. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. According to the Basel III norms, Indian banks will have to maintain the capital adequacy ratio at how much percentage? Your options are option A 8%, option B 9%, option C 10%, option D 11%, option E 7.5%. You have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is 9 percentage. Punjab National Bank BSC 0.29 percent and state run from BSNL today teamed up to the roll out an open mobile wallet speed pay across the 10 states in the country. PNBSC of 0.29 percent is a speedway wallet which will operate like any other mobile wallet for paying bills recharging phone. Besides, its user will be able to deposit and withdraw money. 
from the authorized retail outlets. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. Which of the following mobile wallet used by Punjab National Bank? Your options are option A, free charge, option B, PNB ePay, option C, speed pay, speedway, option D, PNB e wallet, option E, phone e. You have 15 seconds to type in your answers in the comment section below. The correct answer is Speedway. The Indusin Bank, which has been looking to expand its microfinance business, has begun the exclusive talks for a merger with the micro lender Bharat Financial Inclusion, formerly known as SKS Microfinance. The companies informed the exchanges on Monday. The bank said in a filing that without specifying the period that the exclusivity of the agreement provides, for a maturely agreed exclusivity period for due diligence and discussions. The contents of the deal will be finalized during the exclusive negotiation period. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. Which of the non-banking finance companies have suffered the crisis the MI, MFI industry in 2011? Your options are option A, Bandhan Bank, option B, Equitas, option C, Bharat Financial Inclusion, Option D, Jana Lakshmi Bank. Option E, UG1 Small Finance Bank. You have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is Bharat Financial Inclusion. The rating agency Fitch has said that the Indian banks will need about $65 billion additional capital to meet the new Basel Third norm that will be fully implemented by the end of March 2019. While capital needs have fallen from the ratings agency's earlier estimate of $90 billion due to the asset rationalization and weaker than expected growth rate. State-run banks, which accounted for 95% of the estimated capital requirement, have limited options to raise the capital. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. Which of the following has to be followed by commercial banks for risk management? Your options are Option A, Basel II norms, Option B, Basel III norms, Option C, Basel I norms, Option D, Solvency II norm, Option E, none of the above. You have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is Basel II norms. Basel II is the second of the Basel Accords which are recommended on the banking laws and regulation issued by the Basel Committee on the Banking Supervision. The Finance Ministry has notified the minting of commemorative of Rs 505 coins to mark the birth signatory of the popular politician and former Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M. G. Ramachandran. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. Who among the following popular Indian politician will be featured in Rs 100 coin for this 100th birth anniversary? Your options are Option A. Atal Bihari Vajpayee. Option B, M.G. Ramachandran. Option C, Jawaharlal Nehru. Option D, Lal Bahadur Shastri. Option E, Vallabhai Patel. You have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is M.G. Ramachandran. Indescent Bank has secured up to $200 million, which is about 1,282 crores loan from the Asian Development Bank to serve the low-income women borrowers in the rural areas. The bank said as per the loan agreement, about 95% of the ADB funding 
will go towards the credit for the women borrowers. At least 70% of the number of the loan will be deployed to the less developed states. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. Who is the president of Asian Development Bank? Your options are option A Matthew Fox, option C Taki Nako, option C David Muritson, option D Helmut Frisser, option E Shuriki Ishak Kashim. You have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is Taki Nako. According to the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley, the center expects the digital payments to gain traction again on its initiative platforms such as unified payment interface and evolution of technology. The minister's comment come against the backdrop of a marginal decline in digital transaction which had peaked in the aftermath of the demonetization. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. Which company's unified payment interface service was launched by the Union Finance Minister Arun Jaitley? Your options are Option A, Atel Payments, Option B, Amazon UPI, Option C, Beam App, Option D, Google Pay, Option E, Phone Pay. You have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is Google Pay. The tech giant's Google Unified Payment Interface, based on digital payment service Taste, which means fast in Hindi, was launched by the Union Finance Minister. After a year of more of due decisions, the RBI has notified that P2P lending platforms need to be regulated and treated on par with the non-banking financial companies. In a notification, the RBI has pressed the need for regulation of this segment, which is fairly nascent in India, with only 10 to 12 small players. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. Which of the following is correct regarding the peer-to-peer -peer lending? Used for lending money to individuals or businesses through online services that match lenders with borrowers, there are over 30 peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms operating in India as of 2016. Peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms to be treated as NBFCs. Your options are option A1 only, option B2 only, option C3 only, option D1 and 2, option E1, 2 and 3. You have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is 1, 2 and 3. According to the Reserve Bank of India Deputy Governor N.S. Vishwanathan, the days of regulatory forbearance with a with non-performing assets, which is also known as NPAs, are over and the microfinance sector has to grow on the basis of its own strength. One of the things that we are being requested by the microfinance sector industry is of key to recognize the issue of NPAs in the recent past. It is not that every day faces the same extent of problems. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. As per the guidelines issued by RBI, all NBFC MFIs should maintain an aggregate margin cap of not more than your options are option A 8%, option B 9%, option C 10%, option D 12%, option e 15 percent you have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below the correct answer is 12 percent chairman arundhati bhattacharya has said that the, our capital adequacy is quite good and well above what is mandated. We do not have any issues having the sufficient growth capital as of now, depending on how the Indian economy grows 
and if it grows at a very fast clip of 16 to 18 percent it is only then that we see immediate requirement for future growth capital that way the sbi is very well placed let's take a look at the question related to banking which country is running the world's largest current account surplus post brexit your options are option a france option b germany option c uk option d ireland option e india you have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below the correct answer is germany germany is running the world's largest current account surplus Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said that the government is working on a strategy for the consolidation of the banking industry to create bigger and stronger banks. The consolidation of the banks will have to move parallel to the objective of strengthening the banks. Jaitley said at an event organized by the Bloomberg, we are in the advanced stages of coming out with a strategy for consolidation. The objective of the consolidation is to create a bigger and stronger bank. I would prefer a bank, strong bank merging with a strong bank than a weak bank merging with a weak bank. Let's take a look at the question related to banking. Bloomberg has tied up with which social media platform for the live streaming of the news channel? Your options are option A Facebook, option B Twitter, option C Google Plus, option D YouTube, option E Instagram. You have 15 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is Twitter. The country's largest lender, State Bank of India, has lowered the minimum average balance requirement in the savings account to 3000 from 5000 in addition to revising the downstairs penalty for non adherence the revised MAB requirement and charges will become applicable from October, the bank said in a statement. The next question belongs to the banking category. Who of the following is exempted from maintaining the minimum average monthly balances, which is also known as MAB? The options are option A pensioner, option B minors, option C government scheme beneficiaries, option D all of the above. Option E, none of the above. You have 10 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is all of the above. The Lakshmi Villas Bank, which is also known as LVB, is planning to raise funds through the rights issue. The bank's board of directors has approved the financial entity's proposal to raise funds by the way of issue of equity shares on the right basis to existing shareholders of the LVB for an amount of up to 800 crores rupees. Let's look at the last question of the day. Which bank is planning to raise funds by the way of issuing of equity shares on the right basis to the existing shareholders? Your options are Option A Syndicate Bank, Option B Vijaya Bank, Option C Lakshmi Vilas Bank, Option D Indian Bank, Option E State Bank of India. You have 10 seconds to type in your answer in the comment section below. The correct answer is Lakshmi Vilas Bank.